Mr. Zimmerman. Where the pile of lumber is, is where the grandstand will be constructed. So the viewers from that point will have a clear view of the whole track. Over in the foreground, we can see Mr. Simon Hood, Mr. Lindell Gordon, Georgie Barnard, Michael Gordon, and Alan Skeet, who are members of the specification committee, laying out the final details for the construction of the stand and the parking of the cars, the lighting of the area, and other security items that we're going to need. Members of the St. Lucia Fire Brigade Service performing a very important duty for us. They are wetting the track so that the roller can compact the surface properly. These tires, as you know, have been placed here for the safety of the driver because some of the corners are very, very sharp and we expect the track is being interrupted because we are having a problem with sightseers coming and racing on the track and upsetting our work. So officially the track is closed to the public. We would ask all onlookers to appreciate what we're trying to do and not to use the track as a raceway until the day of the Grand Prix. We are here at Pigeon Point this afternoon, giving you a last view of what Pigeon Point looks like. And very shortly, by next weekend, we're going to give you a view of what Pigeon Point will be like for the upcoming Grand Prix, which will be on the 25th, 26th of May this month. As you can see, we have commenced work on the track, and we have actually physically cut the track this morning. Um, we have commenced lining the track with tires for the safety of the spectators who will be standing on this asphalt road right here. Most of the shrub has been cleared away from Pigeon Point so that the spectators will have a full view of the track from any end at which they may be standing. Here we see the heavy equipment in action. And I must add that all the heavy equipment seen on this causeway and all the trucks have been kindly donated by motoring enthusiasts. Mr. Gardner of North Rock has made this load available to us today. And Mr. Yufa Isaac has made his truck available so that we could make this venture a possibility. Yeah, we are using this landfill material you see here so that we could raise one of the stages of the trap. We will take you over to that point and show you exactly what we are doing with this fill and what section of the track that we are elevating. This whole Grand Prix 85 has been made possible through Renault, Martinique and the French Motor Company and also through the energies of the St. Lucia Racing Club and the St. Lucia Motor Club, a newly formed club to encourage all motorsports and all motoring enthusiasts into the field of motorsport. This section of the track is being filled so that when we come off the soft coral track, we will now get onto the asphalt track go down for about 150 yards and then we will make a right turn back onto the asphalt track as you can see we have a lot of local participation in the foreground is mr lindell gordon of gordon bellizer and partners who has been the engineer responsible for the construction of the track in the foreground again, we see um, Mr. Perriot from Azam, one of the Martinican racing teams. Here we have Mr. Perriot of the Martinican Sporting Automobile Club called Azam, speaking with Mr. Georgie Barnard, one of our St. Lucian 
counterparts. Mr. Perot is in charge of the security of the track. It is his responsibility to see that the track conforms to the international racing regulations. There we have Mr. Patrick, who is also a member of ASAM. Ms. Nicole Dupont, who is the president of ASA Tropic, the other sporting automobile club which will be here on the Whitsun weekend. We have here with us Ms. Marilyn St. Prix yes. from ASAM. She's the treasurer of ASAM and fortunately our only speaking French club member. Marilyn, what is your view of the whole situation what do you think of the track and how do you think progress is so far uh, the track the track is uh, very nice for the competition and as uh, the clerk of meeting which is the uh, manager of the race just told me uh, he realized we realized that uh, you are working very much uh, since yesterday that we arrived you uh, you are making very big effort to uh, to do this competition and uh, we thank you very much for that thank you very much marilyn thank you we're talking now to miss caroline mcnamara who is the coordinator for the aqua action and the st lucia grand prix caroline i know you've had a lot of work to do yes colin and um now that you're out here with us on the track what is your view of the whole situation? Well, my view currently is I'm looking at an enormous great loader loading uh, so that this thing can become a ramp. It's a lot of work, but um, everybody's really banding together pretty well, so I should imagine this will come off all right. <laughs> but we do have a hell of a lot to do. Can I ask you a question, sure. Colin? Colin, as president of St. Lucia Racing Limited, how do you see the whole thing? Well, first of all, I see it as a nightmare right now. <laughs> but... <laughs> When I look beyond, I see it as a dream coming true for many St. Lucian motorists and sporting enthusiasts. Yeah. We have a large number of club members and general members of the public who have volunteered to come and help us make this venture a reality. We will be here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, continuing work on the track, and we sincerely hope that the rest of the club members will turn out and support us tomorrow. We'll be going at this pace every day from now until Friday and on the Saturday the 25th we hope that everything will be perfect for this historic event. We hope that uh, everybody will turn out in large numbers to enjoy the fruits of our labor and also enjoy St. Lucia's first International Grand Prix. We are hoping that this will become an annual event and that more people will participate. Thank you. Officiel Martiniquais, parce que ni 